What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Star Wars intro? Oh, come on, I made that a long time ago. My name is Josh. Today we're going to be talking about sports card investor, Jeff specifically. So before we jump into it, if you guys don't mind, drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't. Um, just to kind of start this out, so there's a card out there, Wembenyama from the new Topps Chrome set, which is unlicensed, but Topps has an exclusive deal with Wemby for autographs. So it's gonna be one of the only places you can catch uh, a Wembenyama autograph. There's a huge bounty. Uh, Jeff's gonna go into it. I'm gonna preface uh, some of my criticism that I'm gonna have throughout this in general. I, I really like Jeff. I get what he, I believe I get what he's trying to do. I think that he has a lot of love for the community. I think that he um, wants to see, you know, card collectors grow. But sometimes I think he gets too caught up in the financial side of it. And I know part of that is uh, he, he owns a card shop, which his card shop is, you know, I wrote out like what a card shop I would build would look like. He kind of hit it. Like a couple things I would do a little bit differently, but he did a really good job. Um but I think sometimes people who uh, are as big as he seems to have gotten and is surrounded with the type of people that I think he's surrounded with, I don't know that he's necessarily challenged on a daily basis. You're going you're gonna to see some of this stuff, but not everybody is in collecting for the money. That's the bottom line for this is that some of us collect just for fun. You know, Sure, we like to make a little money from time to time, but it's not always about that. And there's a different flex than just money. Um, but anyway, I'll get into that a little bit more. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below because uh, it's an interesting take. So let's jump into it. Here we go. If you opened up a new pack and found a card inside that had a $1 million bounty offer on it, would you immediately redeem that bounty? Well, there's one collector out there right now who has that option, but he hasn't redeemed it yet. What's going on? We'll give you the lowdown now. He's got a really good team. These videos that they knock out are very, very solid. Um, they're well put together. I don't know uh, where he got some of the guys who um, are setting up the angles, right? They, it's so many different angles. They do a really good job, like genuinely. I'm, I'm impressed with the videos they put out. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to another episode of Cards on the Table, Teapot Carter. So just, I'm going to pause the video throughout. I'm sure it'll be a little bit annoying. If you guys want, in, in the description down below, I'll put the link to the original video. But I just want to point out right here, you know, it, it is about the money, right? What cards sell for, the values he's going to have going across the bottom. And I know that's the setup for this type of video, but... They, they are looking for people who care about the value of cards. So I get that, but I also get that they're looking for kids, but I, I do feel like they're converting kids to this because if you watch this ticker, value of cards, value of cards, value of cards. Um, and it's not to say that's not an aspect of collecting. I think it is. I think it's a huge aspect. I think it's an important aspect, but it does feel like it seems to be kind of the only thing they talk about. Um, even when he says, this will be in my PC, I just think he means not in his store, right? A lot of us, when we say this goes into my personal collection, you know, it's a card like this, right? This card right here, Snoop Connor. I mean, I saw the guy play at Ole Miss. He's probably not going to really make a big dent at the professional level, but I got this autograph while he was at uh, his graduation. So kind of just a cool card for me. That That's a PC card. If anything happens to it, I'm going to gift it to somebody else who I think would love it too, because I have three of them. Um, but I'm not selling them. They're they're my personal cards that are mine. That I mean, some of the guys in the group will say, you know, when I die, the kids can fight over them. Um, but anyway, let's jump back into it again. I'll stop throughout. Maybe a little annoying. If you just want to watch it on your own, links are in the description. But come back. Let me know what you guys think. I'm curious what your take is. It. Sure. Gentlemen, 
a million dollar card is now sitting in the hands of a collector. There's a bounty on it, but it hasn't been redeemed yet. Is it ever gonna be redeemed? Should it absolutely be redeemed? We are going to get into this topic today. So Freudian slip, right? I don't think he, I think he probably writes out a high level of like what they're gonna talk about and how, but saying, should it definitely be redeemed? We know where he stands, right? Before he's even said his opinion, go get the million dollars, right? Now, just so we're on the same page, I probably would do that as well in this scenario. I think Wemby's great, but I'm not a Wemby truther. So a million dollars would really change my family's situation, right? I think a million dollars would change a lot of people's family situation, but it wouldn't change everyone's family situation. And I know a lot of people, it's like the money isn't the important part in collecting. They just really like the cards that are financially they're good, which financially I'm good, but I mean, a million dollars, I could pay for my kids' colleges. I could set them up with a couple of houses, right? I could put really nice down payments on houses for them coming out of college. And, and I mean, that could be something where I just go, man, kids are taken care of and maybe I go get a Tesla or something. But anyway, we're going to jump back into it again. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate any thoughts you have. Again, I'm hoping you guys will comment and we can kind of have a conversation around this. And I don't think there's a right way to collect. I think that if you're collecting cards and you're having fun doing it the way you're doing it, that's the important part. I think where you're maybe going the wrong direction is if you're not enjoying it, right? As long as you're enjoying it, I think, you know, there's a range of ways to do it. But again, let's jump back into it. Today, because it is a big one. And look, here's the backstory on this. Topps Chrome Basketball 2024 came out last week. It hit card shops all over the world, just like here at Cards HQ last week. And uh, Jared Blesnick from Blez Sports Cards, a big breaker, they had put out a bounty of $1 million in exchange for the Victor Webinyama Topps Chrome Super Fractor Auto, the one of one, the premier card from that product. Jared Blesnick wanted it. And he put out a video some time ago saying that he would pay a million dollars to whoever pulled that card. Well, sure enough, over the weekend, in fact, it was late Friday night that a collector posted to Instagram. If you haven't seen it, the Jer uh, Blesnick, Blez Sports cards, dude, those guys are over the top, right? Like they've always been over the top if you never paid any attention to them. They're interesting guys based out of Vegas, so it kind of makes some sense that they're like, but uh, I'll try to put a link in the description of his Instagram so you guys can check that out if you're curious. But it was a very over-the-top offer, uh, just the way he presented it. But I, I think these guys are legit. They bought a few big cards. He's going after uh, what he thinks is, is a big card. And I think it's, again, marketing notoriety. But it, I think it's a legit offer, legit offer that he had pulled the card. This was from Z Collector M on Instagram. He goes by Michael and he first put up a, a picture of the card. Then he put up a video of the card showing that it was real, flipping the card over. This was a new Instagram account. This collector is not really known. There's some rumors that maybe he's an overseas collector, but we're not real sure about that yet. Some people were even questioning if it was even a real photo and video because nobody knew who this person was, but I have checked with so here's one of the first things that kind of rubs me the wrong way. So we, as people, quote, in the hobby, right? We've been in the hobby for a while, maybe even collecting for a year, six months, whatever. We're not known. Nobody knows who I am, right? Like we have a small group of guys who are like, yeah, Josh is cool. We like Josh. Jeff has no clue who I am. The, like the number of people <laughs> that are in Jeff's like sphere is so small compared to the number of collectors that are out there. It's insane. But this starts kind of this thought process of, well, one of the big breakers didn't get it. So why did this random person get it? Which is so out of, like, it's so out of touch because almost every post that a big breaker hits a big card, you have collectors saying, something in the realm of only the big breakers get these they must set them up to get these it doesn't make sense why somebody who 
I would be willing to bet that it's a close to a 50-50 split between a breaker breaking Topps Chrome basketball and somebody just ripping a box that they bought, whether it be from their card shop or directly from Topps. So, oh man, there are certain products out there, National Treasures and other big, big products where I, I do think the majority of those boxes are ripped by breakers because I just don't think there's as many collectors, consumers, however you want to call it, but people like myself, people like you potentially, that can just afford a box. But these were sold on tops.com for $300 a piece. So I think the majority of collectors, right, over 50% of collectors could go, yeah, I'll, I'll take a $300 shot at hitting a Wembenyama rookie auto. Because yes, there's this one of one, and yes, Blesnick put a uh, million dollar bounty right around, um, right around the day it came out, right release day. But the the boxes were sold almost a month before release day, which means that people bought them before they knew there was going to be this big bounty on the idea that you could hit both a LeBron James auto, which we haven't seen a lot of, if any, and then a Wembenyama auto. So two huge names in basketball. So there are a lot of unknown regular <laughs> collectors that bought boxes. Anyway, let's continue. In some industry Oops. sources who have seen the card, who are aware of what that card is supposed to look like, and they believe that that is in fact the real card. So that it should be the real deal. This guy has the real deal. But he pulls the card Friday night. I don't think thinks it's weird that. Uh, during this, which this is a lot of opinion and he's allowed to share his opinions as his channel is what he does. But getting hung up on this card's real, this card's really real, like it's super real. I know because, you know, very, very weird speaking from authority. It just kind of weird to me. But anyway, night Sunday, Jared Blesnick goes on Instagram and puts out a video pleading for this guy to pick up the phone and please, Call please, me. you know, Call get his, take his messages because he's reaching out says. saying, I want to give you a million dollars for the card. And the guy hasn't responded to him. Now the guy did post a response in the comments saying that he got in touch. So they have now connected, but here we are a number of days later. The bounty hasn't been officially redeemed yet. I've messaged the collector multiple. You can sell this $5 spatula on Amazon and compete with hundreds of other spatula sellers, or you can sell digital products on Amazon and compete with almost no one. You see, I use a brand new Amazon. Have checked with some industry sources who have seen the card, who are aware of what that card is supposed to look like, and they believe that that is in fact the real card, so that it should be the real deal. This guy has the real deal. But he pulls the card Friday night. Sunday, Jared Blesnick goes on Instagram and puts out a video pleading for this guy to pick up the phone and please, please, you know, get his take his messages because he's reaching out saying, I want to give you a million dollars for the card. And the guy hasn't responded to him. Now, the guy did post a response in the comments saying that he got in touch. So they have now connected. But here we are a number of days later. The bounty hasn't been officially redeemed yet. I've messaged the collector multiple times, no reply. I have reached out to Jared Ble Blesnick. He has not commented yet either. Hopefully this deal gets done. Hopefully this guy takes the money and does this. But guys, here's my question for you. If you pulled this card, would you not immediately go get on the next airline flight to fly to Las Vegas and show up at Jared Blesnick's store and say, here's the card. I brought my suitcases, fill it up with a million bucks. I'm heading back home. I would not pass go. So again, Jeff's sharing his opinion, right? The part that gets frustrating to me is, bro, he so out of touch, right? Like this guy could be an ER doctor and be on his seven days on, right? This guy could be so many different jobs. He could be working on an oil rig. He could be doing so many jobs where he can't get away, but he will have a block of time that he can. So the idea that number one, Blesnick deserves this card because he has this bounty that's 
a million dollars. So he deserves the card. You should go give him the card and get your million dollars. I think is, again, would the majority of collectors take advantage? Probably, yeah. I think I think probably 70% of collectors would take advantage, maybe more, right? But there's still collectors out there that when they hit a card, they don't care. They're collecting that card. They collect all the cards. I know guys who have cards all the way from the 60s to now. They've never sold anything. It's just sorted nicely and put away. And they don't care. A few of them are just starting to grade some just for fun. But they don't care. It's it's for them. They pull out their cards. They look through them. It's memories of times and ages. And I remember when this guy was good. I remember pulling this card. I remember this. So I think he's a little bit out of touch because, number one, it's been, it's been less than a week, right? It was Friday of last week that this card was pulled. So we're at the one-week mark. There's so many reasons this guy hasn't cashed this card in, including but not limited to maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe the flex for him is holding on to the card and saying, I'm not going to take the million dollars. Also, Blesnick never said that you have to cash it in by X time. He never put an end date, so the million dollars is on the table. He could be shopping to see if anybody would do better. So, anyway... I just feel like he's out of touch because he doesn't know this guy's situation. And I think there's a better way to say this. He could say, I'm surprised he hasn't done this. But he's so emphatic, like like everyone lives in his situation where they can just get up and leave and go places and move and do whatever they want because they have all the flexibility in the world. And I think some people out there would think, well, listen, it's a million dollars, right? If you lose your job. Here's the thing. A million dollars doesn't go as far as it used to. Right, realistically, a lot of us are living on let's say eighty thousand dollars a year. A million dollars, he is going to get hit with some taxes. So you're looking at you know six hundred, maybe six hundred fifty thousand, which means you're looking at maybe eight years ish of not working that you could live off of that card. So I don't think anybody's trying to lose their job over a million dollars, right? It's not, it's not fu money, right? It's just very much life enhancing money. Right? Your life is going to change a little bit and you're going to be in a better situation. So, But not everybody cares about that. Not everybody even is in a position where they need that. You, we don't know. This guy could be independently wealthy. I would go straight to Vegas and collect my million dollars immediately. The fact that this collector hasn't done this yet, T-Bot, what, what does this mean? This The whole way uh, this has played out has been kind of wonky, right? Like. This account shows up, like you said, nobody knows who is this guy, is it even real? And it's just without any of the fanfare that we probably would have expected around the biggest pull of the year, one of the biggest pulls of the last five years in terms of value of a card. So that's just felt really funny. I, I think we probably all expected it was an inevitable thing that a breaker would hit this and we'd have the hyped up video uh, surfacing. We don't have any of that. We just have a no audio like road. See, again, they said the quiet part out loud, which was, we believed a breaker would hit this, that you would have a ton of fanfare. Everyone would talk about this. So when collectors say, I, I'm so mad that it's only breakers who hit cards, it's not, right? Like uh, two years ago, uh, a guy hit um, the Wander Franco Superfractor at, I believe it was a, it wasn't Walgreens, it was one of the other ones, but it was like a Walgreens type place. There's no fanfare. Guy sold it for $70,000 in a parking lot. Uh, a kid hit the Mac Jones Black Finite. So we've seen cards be hit by not breakers, but breakers do consume a healthy portion of any product run for sure. So hearing these guys say, again, the quiet part out loud, which is, yeah, of course breakers are going to hit this, which again, I don't, I don't believe. In fact, there's a lot of cards out there that we don't know where they are, and it very well was hit by a collector who just put it into their collection and moved on because they don't care. Anyway. Rotation of the card. From a brand new Instagram, brand new account, Instagram account. From somebody who's never shown his face. Yeah. We don't even know what this guy Michael right. looks like. Doesn't right. even put his last name yeah. out there. Yeah. Uh, Crazy. This is one of the rare instances. So again, another part where I feel like he's inc incredibly out of touch, right? So... 
if anybody in our group had hit this card, I told a bunch of people, if you hit this card or you hit the uh, the triple auto from Tops now, which by the way, how incredible is it that Tops has cards on both sides, right? They have this Women Yama that's put in a standardized product, Tops Chrome, first release in a very long time of Tops Chrome basketball since like the, the early to mid 2010s. Then also a triple auto from the USA basketball team that's also garnering allegedly a million dollar bid because Giannis said he would double what anybody else was offering and the, and the highest offer I've heard was a half million which means in theory Giannis is offering a million dollars which I would think would also include an opportunity to meet him which would be kind of incredible in and of itself why if you're not somebody who's interested in but again Jeff and these guys are looking for publicity they're looking for popularity they're looking to be kind of fawned over and looked at as authorities and they're they're looking to grow their brands maybe this guy's good maybe this guy has his little slice of life right he's got his his job his family whatever he's got going on and he has zero interest in having anybody know that he's going to get a million dollars if he chooses to do it let alone make himself into some celebrity just because he pulled a card so I just feel like they're not thinking about anything except for how they think and not thinking about how like maybe another person might be thinking because maybe this guy is going to take the million dollars and maybe he's just trying to keep himself anonymous because that's important to him. We don't know. There's a lot of people who like really appreciate and enjoy their anonymity and just want to be a normal person and do what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and they don't want something like this to change their lives. This is where a bounty that's put out probably isn't excessively above and beyond what the card would actually do on open auction. We saw like with the Drew Jones Superfractor and other bounties, Jason, you know, things that have come out, those are probably much higher than if the card actually went on the open market. In this case, I don't know what this card would sell for at open auction. It might do over a million dollars. It might wow. do more than that. I don't know. Because so you actually think <laughs> look at, look at that the, this yeah. collector's got something he seriously needs? So e even the way Jeff responds there, you actually think a little condescending. I know that these two work together, but it comes across as condescending. I think that Teapot has a reasonable thought process. He's about to explain it. Again, I watched this video, so I'm reacting a second time. The first time I was yelling at the TV, I'm what the? But Jeff is loaded up. Jeff doesn't think this card's worth a million dollars, and he thinks you should go get your million immediately. But there's a few things, and, and at the end, I'm going to explain to you guys, to, to anybody who chooses to watch this video, I'm going to explain to you what I would explain to any guy in my community or gal who ended up pulling this card. Because had anybody reached out to me, I would have walked them through kind of a better understanding of all of the things that are going to trigger with a million dollar card, right? Because it's not as simple as just go get your million dollars and shove it in a, a suitcase. Like the way he's saying this, it's lowbrow. It's either he assumes people are stupid or he's being stupid. Again, in general, I like Jeff, but there's just a lot in this that feels. I think he's not necessarily assuming we're stupid and he's definitely not stupid. I think he's just leaning into the hype of it. But that means you assume to some degree that we are stupid because there's a lot of things that go into this needs to think about here. I don't know. It's just, it did. wow. I, I didn't think the black shimmer would go for over $500,000. It, it, it did, it did. And you're referring to from Prism from Basketball, Prism, first the one of the one black shimmer. Non-auto, right. first off the line, black curtain background. So that card obviously sold for a ton of money. Now that was NBA licensed. Was licensed. This one's not. That's right. But it was an autograph. Yeah, I don't know. And now yeah. on top of this, so Beijing Card Love pulled the other one of one Wemby auto from Topps Chrome, the certified rookie autograph superfractor. I don't know how much that card's worth relative to the base one of one superfractor. If I could get a million dollars for this card, I'd be there. Okay. I'd be like, give me my million okay. dollars. I'm moving on. I don't even care to, sorry, Ken Golden. No, I'm not going to call you. I'm just taking my million dollars and going. Um, but the one thing I will note too, people were speculating that because both Wemby superfractor autos got hit, Blaze uh, Breaks pulled the one of one Helix Wemby. There have been some big cards hit. 
that wax prices on this would be going down rapidly. Yeah. Well, the carb was pulled four or five days ago or, or roughly, the boxes are down 20, $25. It's not like they've come crashing down. There are still some high dollar cards coming out of this, including all the other Wemby autos. You got Scoot Henderson autos uh, selling for over $1,000. The numbered stuff, the black to 10, Brandon Miller's orange to 25 sold for over a thousand. So there's value in this box with those rookie autos. The wax price hasn't come crashing down just yet in spite of the big chases being off the board. Well, I'm glad the wax price hasn't come crashing down because Carter, as you know, we got a bunch of it in our showcases here at Cards HQ. We actually have a lot of boxes of that product, which is nice. People have been coming in and buying. So if I was speaking to Jeff, hey man, you got to cut out actually, right? When you say actually, obviously, they're, they're condescending terms. I think we all say them, so I'm not like really giving him a hard time, but um, if you are going to continue doing what you're doing, which is be in front of the camera, and I think you're pretty good in front of the camera, you gotta cut those words out. But again, he goes back to what's important to him. I have some of this wax, so thankfully the price aren't, dude, there's Wemben Yama autos in there. The, the wax is going to hold some value. It's one of the only products to hit Wemby autos, and I'll be honest, going into the season, I thought he might be pretty good. I was a little bit surprised. I think he exceeded my conservative estimations of what, what he could do. I got to tell you, uh, man, in the Olympics, he looked really good, right? You put him alongside, um, I can't remember, the guy from Minnesota, Gobert. Uh, and, and between those two, dude, they look kind of nasty, right? Like, that was a really good French squad. I, I know... USA kind of dismantled a little bit, but different level of a team, to be honest. And I think LeBron was really on one, and Steph Curry was balling. Like, there was just so much talent. Jason Tatum's like a, a sixth player on that team, which is insane. Uh, but that team was just so freaking good. But France really played incredibly well. And, and between him and Gobert, it was a tough team. I mean, imagine if those guys actually linked up in the pros. Imagine Gobert on his next contract goes down to San Antonio and is still playing at a reasonably high level. I mean, that's anyway. So I think the wax prices are going to hold up. I think Wembenyama is going to be a chase. I think barring a uh, catastrophe with some sort of injury, knock on wood, hope that doesn't happen. Um, he's going to be a very interesting guy for the next decade. Very interesting. Buying in, and we were able to help them out with that. Some products we sell out of really quickly. That one we we have a number of boxes of. So it's good that the value is holding right now. Hopefully that will continue to be the case. But Carter, if you were the collector that pulled this million dollar card, is it even something you think about and debate? Or do you just go straight immediately and take that million dollar bounty? I'd be in Vegas yesterday. Yeah. Point blank. I mean, yeah, put it on black. And let I mean, it go for sure. Two. Yeah, that, that's you, not me. But, you know. So. I, I, if you guys haven't watched any of Teapot stuff, he's an interesting guy. He's very conservative, and I think right there he took a shot at their idea of go get the money really quick because you need to do something with it, right? You're going to go gamble it away. But I think that if I was able to talk to Teapot outside of these two, we would discuss the, the ramifications. And again, we're going to talk about that. I'm going to speak to you guys as though you're the one who hit it and explain to you kind of the, the downstream things you need to really consider because when it comes to a windfall in, in the neighborhood of this amount of money, I mean, this, this is life enhancing, right? So we're, we're going to jump into that. Let's finish out the video, but uh, I kind of like Teapot's shot there. It's kind of funny to me. Um, I don't know if he was taking it the guy personally or if it was just this whole rush thing or if it was just something off the cuff, but I thought it was funny. You know, I, I'd be in Vegas yesterday. I, I think it's a no-brainer type of bounty. I do agree with Teapot, though. I feel like there are bounties out there that are a certain multiplier above what the card's actually worth. This card's a little different. You know, I, I don't think the bounty is so much higher than what I think it would actually go for today. In the long term, you know, I, I, th there's a debate there. There's a lot of debate around other cars. There's debates around his first Bowman Superfractor Auto, right? There's gonna be debates about his true Prism Black when that sells. Like, what's his best card out there? And this card's in that conversation, but it may not be. And the fact that there's a conversation around it, you know, unlike in other products like football right now, where, you know, or, or all licensed products, right? 
you kind of know what that top card is, and so then it's better to value it that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's it's interesting that both of you think that if this card were to go out to open auction, that it could get around that million dollar mark. So it does actually give this collector something to think about. Mm -hmm. To me, I, I don't, I'm not sure I see that. I, I think a million dollars is a relatively strong offer on this card because it is unlicensed. Granted, it is his only rookie auto, so I mean that does add value to it. But I, I... so a couple things, Jeff. So <laughs> you keep saying that it's unlicensed. I don't think that matters as much as you think it matters. The fact is, the licensing thing has only been a thing for the last decade or so. Like this is a new problem. Before this, everyone was just licensed, so it didn't matter. And they told you there's another card. It's not an NBA card necessarily, but it's a Bowman card that's a, a refractor auto. So I'm with them. I think I understand the thought process, right? Because the, the Michael Jordan Fleer 86 was the card. Now the 84 star card is the card. So which one's the real card and which one's the best Michael Jordan rookie? At the end of the day, you're, you're going to be happy having either he's really hung up on it wouldn't do a million dollars i agree that a million dollars is a strong offer and to be honest e even if there was a possibility it could do one one or one two i don't know that that matters like 10 percent more money which is 100 grand it's healthy but the risk of it coming in at seven hundred thousand also exists so is the ceiling much higher than one million probably not but the floor is definitely lower potentially. I don't see it as a million dollar card. Maybe I'm wrong on it. I see it maybe as a $500,000 card, but probably not a million dollar card. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Of course, there is the other side of all this. Maybe this guy doesn't care about the money. Maybe he's just wants it for his PC. And that's, you know, the thing that that's possible as well. I mean, it, if I were, if I pulled that USA basketball card myself that of course I've got a bounty on that I'm going after that triple auto the LeBron Steph KD auto if I pulled that card myself I don't care what I wish the kid in the background would have stopped and like made a face or something that would have been so awesome bounties are out there I would not sell that card I would keep that card that particular one I would keep because as a collector I desperately want that card well, that's now where you're doing it wrong you got to pull it and then you put out a bigger bounty, and then you ask Giannis to pay you double. There you go. Or the card, like Appa he said. Appa apparently, well, he deleted his comment. He deleted his comment. He was on the double train for a minute, I think maybe before he realized quite where the offers had gotten to on that card. But that that was, that's a lot of fun that Giannis has been, you know, playing in the bounty game as well. And, and he, he respects the card the same way I respect the card. He really wants it. Well, look, I don't know exactly what is going to happen with this million-dollar offer on the Wemby one of one card. I'm hopeful that we get an update soon from the collector or from Jared Blesnick. Maybe they come out with some joint video soon where the collector has in fact flown to Vegas and, and accepts the offer. But it's surprising to me that we haven't heard anything yet. And this is now several days after the card has in fact been pulled. So we'll see where this whole thing goes. But one thing I know for sure is that arena club Oh boy, and then we roll into Arena Club, which, anybody want to explain to me Arena Club, like where in the world does this company come from? Why has it gotten so big and why are people gambling on their packs? But that's a different conversation for a different day. So real quick, let's jump into this. Uh, let's pretend that you just came into my shop, which I do not have, I work out of my house, but let's say that one of the guys in the community or gals, uh, you pulled a card. Okay, Th this is the conversation I would have with you, right? First of all, congratulations, that's incredible, right? You got a lot of big decisions ahead of you, very excited for you, and I would love to go on the journey with you. So if and when you make some big decisions, let me know. I'm gonna bring my camera out if you'll let me, and I would love to record for you to share with not only the community, but the world, whether you wanna be in the video or you wanna have you know somebody do it for you, I'd be more than willing to be a spokesperson for you. Uh, if you don't want to be on camera, I can do the camera work. But what a fun video, right, to be able to remember this experience. But let's talk about downstream, and let's talk about being fiscally responsible with this huge opportunity. So number one, if you are choosing to sell the cards, here's some things you need to take into consideration. A million-dollar windfall is going to get taxed very heavily, right? So what we should do is we should go sit down with a tax accountant and potentially a tax lawyer you should buy a little bit of time from them, $300, $500 worth of time, 
and have them go over some strategies of how to insulate you from any sort of additional taxation. So what's interesting is there are ways that you could put this card into a business and then you could then write off a ton, a ton, a ton of business expenses against this million dollar earnings, okay? The other question is, is that after this is done, what's your plan? Are you just gonna go back to being a standard collector? Do you plan on taking this money and doing something with it? Do you wanna buy a house? Do you wanna buy, like what are the steps? Because if you're gonna be buying a house, for example, then you could put this card Again, I'm not an accountant, just so we're on the same page. I'm not somebody who understands taxes to the fullest. I'm talking through thought processes, but this is where I would tell you, you know, whether you want me to come along with, because I gotta be honest, hugely interesting to me. I wouldn't ask for a penny. It's just interesting to see uh, the mechanics behind the scenes of like how this works, because I've come into a $150,000 windfall. I did really well on crypto during uh, COVID, kind of fun but nothing near a million dollars, and I left a lot of that money in crypto, so it has gone back down, but um, I expanded the amount of crypto that I own. But if you were gonna buy a house, then there's a possibility that you would put the money into a, so basically the card would become owned by a business that would then end up buying your house, and so that way the business could write off that investment against the purchase of the card, right? So the card sells for a million, you buy, let's say a $500,000 house, you can write off that 500,000 partially towards that million, lowering your tax threshold and how much money you'll have to actually pay the government. So there are a number of different opportunities. That's a thought process. It's not necessarily a stone cold one, but knowing what you wanna do with the money and knowing what your plans are can help to set up as much of a tax shelter as possible so you can lower your uh, tax responsibility at the end of this. I also think that depending on, so let's say you, you have been trying to uh, start selling cards more on eBay and you've been trying to do some other things. And so you view this as an opportunity, hey, I could start a YouTube page and I could uh, talk about this card, talk about how I like to collect, talk about some things. You could use this card for a month or two and use it to promote what you're doing and get a lot of eyeballs on yourself that otherwise you couldn't so and and still collect the million dollars at the end if that was important to you you could still reach out to uh golden auctions and some of the other places that would love to talk to you i mean maybe this person does want to become famous and maybe they want to get on golden's show on netflix right like there's there's a ton of opportunity in front of the person who pulled this it's an incredible opportunity. I think you should look into as many options as possible. I think you should continue to work your job, continue to live your normal life, but you should explore all of the opportunities in front of you. But the biggest one is, if I choose to take the money, how do I insulate myself against having 40% grabbed by the government? And I think that's the number one biggest thing. So um, going back to just kind of my opinion overall in the video, again, at the end, he comes down a little bit and he talks about, well, maybe the guy just wants it for his collection. He talks about the fact that if he got the Topps triple auto from Topps now from the Olympics, that he would not sell that. And so he gets it. It's just, again, I think he's selling the hype, selling the video, selling the excitement because he wants people to click in so that he can do his arena club uh, commercial at the end. But my point is this. I don't think making it all about the money is right. And I don't think skipping over, you know, how big of a decision something like this is. It's not as easy as I hit this card, give me a million dollars, put it in this briefcase, and I'm going to take it home and just hide it in the corner, right? Because you could also take this money and you could put a sizable amount of it into a 401k or some other options to uh, insulate yourself or to protect yourself from taxation as well. So, Again, I think there's a ton of options to consider. I think that even if you say, yes, I'm going to go take the million dollars or sell the card, do you sell it this year? Do you sell it next year? Which one is gonna give you the best opportunity for you to insulate yourself? Because maybe you need a whole year to spend money that you were gonna spend anyway and write it off against the card because you don't have time to do it this year because of your life situation. So again, 
everything's not as cut and dry as a lot of these guys say on YouTube and on social media. Yes, I'm probably over talking it, but this is the way my brain works. And I think it's important to think about downstream decisions, the ripple effect of any big decision that we make as you have to make smaller decisions along the way. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys checking out the video. Uh, as always, if you guys need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here to help and I'll see you guys soon.